So today we're going to be talking about acorns. Now in this area of the northeast there are two main acorns that you can eat. There's the red oak acorn and there's the white oak acorn. And today we're going to deal with the differences between the two types of acorn. And there's a lot of differences, even though they're both from oak trees, you, you treat them very differently when it comes to uh, preparing them. The red oak, as you can see, is much shorter and rounder, whereas the white oak is elongated. Also, the red oak has a, has a flat base on it, so that you can actually stand it on its base, whereas if you try to stand this on its base, it just falls over. The white oak acorns have a very thin shell on them, and if you try to crack them, they don't crack very easily. So, the best way to go about it is actually to cut them in half. Now I've devised this wonderful jig here where you can just lay the acorn in the jig and taking a knife you slice them in half so which gives you two halves of an acorn. The white oak acorns tend to oxidize when they're exposed to air so the way you avoid that is you make sure that the container that you're putting them in has some water in there and once you drop them into water then they will, they will stay nice and white. I have a, um, a big container which I was working on earlier here and w once they've been soaking for a little while you'll find that the, the skins come off easily too. So it's a good idea to keep them soaking in water even with the shells on. So once you have all your acorns sliced, as you can see, um, it's quite easy to take a little knife and pop the centre out the acorn and it comes out clean without the skin on it. Sometimes the skin will come with it and you can scrape that off pretty easily. Now if you're adventurous you can actually try breaking it like so without the use of a knife and I very often do that instead of wasting my time picking the knife up all the time and in the end Oh, I'm putting them in the wrong place. In the end, you, uh, you'll have a nice container full of shelled acorns without any skins on. So I have this basher here. <laughs> I made this out of some uh, eastern cedar. Uh, I, I use it for all kinds of things, but I found it very handy for breaking acorns. Now with the red oak acorns, as I said before, you can stand them on their ends. They have flat bottoms to them, so they can be stood up. Whereas the, the white oak will fall over if you try doing that. And what you do is you stand it on its end, so that the point is pointing upwards, and you go bang. And that splits it and gives you the opportunity to then remove the nut meat from inside. And it's a fairly simple process once you do that. So Heather, have you ever uh, made acorn flour? No, this is my first time. Okay, so we're going to be doing that today. But you can't do it all in one day, by the way. Um, the trouble is that the acorns have a lot of tannin in them. And if you try to eat them as they are, they're very bitter. We need to get the tannin out of the acorns. And the way we're going to do that is by soaking them. And I will show you, um, it's, a, it's a process we call leaching. And I'll show you some of the leaching that I'm doing right now. We'll take all of these pieces of acorn and we're going to chop them up very fine. And this I'm going to do in a food processor. And then once they're made into what, what I call grits, acorn grits, I put them in in jars like so and fill them with water and change the water two or three times a day and I do this for a, with white acorn I do this for a whole week. We're going to grind this down into small pieces so I'm going to leave it in the water actually and put it into the food processor put the lid on and here we go I've got the grits here, which we just made, and I'm going to add some water to it. I'm 
Now I want to get the starch off it, so what I do now is to pour it through a sieve, which collects all the grits. And what's going through it is actually the, the starch water, which I will then leave in the refrigerator, and in about three or four hours, all of the starch will have settled to the bottom. I'll pour the water off, and then I dry out the starch. Actually, what I, what I do is I, I run water through it a couple of times to, to get the bitterness out. Um, and then I just dry it out in my dehydrator. You can do it in an oven, wherever you like. And you end up with this lovely powder here, this uh, starch powder, which can be used just like cornstarch. So now once we've removed the starch, I top the thing up again with water and I'm going to leave it sitting out on my balcony out there because it's a cool day out. You really need to keep it cool because if it gets too warm it'll, it'll go off, it'll get rancid. So you'll keep it in the refrigerator or somewhere cool. And I will change the water in this. Today, being the first day, I'll change it three or four times. And then after that, two or three times a day. And it will take about a week to get all of the tannins out of the, the grits. Now it's very important, as you can see with these, I have labels on the top. I, I always put the date of when we start, so that it, it gives me an idea. It, I never actually trust it. I, I always taste it to make sure that, that, that all of the tannins out of it, because if you leave any, even the slightest bitterness, it will come through in the flour. And so you, you really want to remove all the bitterness. So if it takes 10 days, it takes 10 days. But I, I found that most of them take about a week. What you need to do is to, to pour the water off several times a day. And I use a tea strainer so that we don't lose any of the grits. So you just Pour it slowly, slowly, into the sink, into the strainer. And when most of the liquid is out, you can't get all the liquid out, obviously, then you take that, plop it there, and you top it up with clean water. I now have two jars that are ready to be dried. They've both been going for over a week now. So, the first thing I need to do is to pour the water off. This is the sieve that I use because I'm going to be pouring everything into there, including the grits. And make sure that there's, all the grits are out of the jar. Again with this one, shake it up first to loosen the grits up, take the lid off and pour it all in here. And now we have a sieve full of grits that will need to drain for a little while. So I'm going to leave that sitting in the sink for about 10-15 minutes before taking it down to my dehydrator. Well, this is one of the shelves of my dehydrator and this is usually pretty good for, for most things but this is a very fine grit so what I have done is to cut some pieces of this bobbinet which is very fine and I'll be putting the grits onto the bobbinet now using my hands I'm going to Spread this stuff out. So I've got a nice thin layer of it. There we go. And put that in there. When I do this, until I have managed to empty the sieve. So now I have four shelves of it in there and 
I turn it on to the lowest heat. I don't want a high heat for drying these out. Uh, the lower the better, really. So I'll put it on the lowest heat here, which is around, uh, there we are, 115, one, actually 110 here. Okay. And then I put it on for about, I don't know, four or five hours. I'll come down and check it regularly. And that's it. I have a large bag of acorn grits sitting here, which I had sitting in my freezer. Now I'm going to turn this into flour. Now, for the past few years, in, I, what I've been doing is using a coffee grinder which is a very long slow process and it doesn't do a complete job. I have to put it through the grinder then put it through a sieve and then put the rest of it through a grinder and it was, it was a very long process. But now I have this wonderful mill here, this flour mill and it makes my life so much easier. All I need to do is to pour a whole mess of this stuff into the top. I don't even need to put the lid on. And I'm not going to put the lid on because I want to watch it. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn my mill on and I'm going to start the grinding process. <laughs> plenty of room in there. I can do the rest of it. Anyway, that's... It has turned from this into this. Quite remarkable. Now I have this wonderful flour to cook with. Whoops! And I'm making a mess all over the place. So I'm going to put this lid back on again and I'm going to finish grinding the rest of it. So we, we started out with these acorns and through a series of processes we now wind up with a nice big bag of acorn flour which I'm going to be using very shortly now for cooking and you can use acorn flour for just about anything that you would use regular flour for the only thing about it is that it doesn't have any gluten so if you need to make some kind of a dish that requires gluten then you need to mix it with regular flour, sort of 50-50.